Chesterfield will be without injured striker Phil Walker for at least six weeks. So this afternoon, Alan Birch and Alan Crawford have the task of supporting Ernie Moss. One other change from the regular league lineup is at left back, where John Sturk comes in for Gary Pollard. For Millwall, only goalkeeper John Jackson and Mel Blythe have any real depth of experience. Blythe today given an organising role in midfield. It's a lineup that includes five teenagers and three 20 year olds. Terry Long continues as Millwall's acting manager, though he has made no secret of the fact that he would like the job on a permanent basis. And a guest of the Millwall directors today, Peter Anderson, the former Sheffield United player who flew in from the United States on Thursday, also to be considered for the manager's job. A referee with a famous footballing name, Mr. Allison, David Allison, in fact, from Lancaster. And Millwall kick off, attacking the goal to the right in the first half. Chesterfield in the white shorts. We're watching today's game from a brand new commentary position. Both Crawford and Birch will be expected to head into the penalty area. Perhaps more so than when Walker and Moss offer the two big man strike force. take a little while for Chesterfield to adapt to this. Here is Alan Birch. Tag is the defender and Massey helping him and Birch leaves them both. Is there a gap for him at the near post? But here's Stark and now Crawford and touched down by Bonnyman. The goal is given and after the scramble the final touch was from Bonnyman. Only 12 minutes before the Chesterfield supporters can raise their arms in triumph. Well, it was a real scramble after John Sturk had his shot blocked. Crawford was right in there, and it rolled invitingly to Bonnyman, 1-0 to Chesterfield. Here's Moss. Now Birch. And Bonnyman again. And a brilliant save from Jackson. Crawford trying to keep it in. But Phil Bonnyman really hammering the header to Jackson's right. And the goalkeeper at full stretch. Cello was obstructed as he tried to feed off Mehmet. Millwall's scoring power reduced by the absence today through injury of their captain Nicky Chatterton and top scorer. And they have the free kick here. Set up for Mehmet. And Turner's handling had to be good. Dibble following in quickly. Hit really powerfully by Dave Mehmet. Past the wall. Now Tart. And when they can't hit Moss, it's not so easy for them to find the smaller man Crawford there. Chesterfield getting the throw. And now Crawford has some space. Can he get it onto his left foot? It comes for Wilson. Danny Wilson's final effort. Here's the space that Crawford had on his stronger left foot. Birch arrived and in fact got a bit too close to him and was wrong-footed anyway. And then Wilson blazed it wide. 
Ramos. Wyatt has just sat in front of the back four for Millwall. Made it difficult for Chesterfield really to make progress through the centre. for Kinsella and what a good ball that was into the stride of Mehmet Dibble arriving and Sturk had to tidy it up when Massey was coming in but it was a real quality ball from Tony Kinsella the number seven there and almost opened Chesterfield up played first time and it was the last act of the first half in which Millwall go off trailing again in an away game Chesterfield taking the lead after 12 minutes with the goal from Phil Bonneman. But in essence, really not at their best in the first half. But at half time, it's Chesterfield 1. Chesterfield start the second half. Conscious perhaps of the fact that their promotion hopes last season finally disappeared when they were beaten at Millwall in April. And they've still got a little bit to do to win this game their application just softening a little bit after the early goal and Millwall had one or two moments towards the end of the first half Ridley's header swept forward by Roberts on from Dibble and back from Bill Green Both teams will be playing in the second round of the FA Cup next Saturday. Chesterfield with that fascinating tie at Bramble Lane against Sheffield United. While Millwall will be at home to Exeter. Andy Massey with the throw. Burke taking too long, and there may be something for Chris Dibble here. The linesman was flagging. Presumably Dibble offside, but the error came from John Sturk, who allowed Massey to Harris and hustle him, and Dibble here was adjudged offside. Cross and appeared to be impeded, and the free kick is given. Foul by Sitton. So more pressure on that young Millwall defence. And Chesterfield on the side quite capable of threatening the best in the air. What a power. coming wide from Bill Green. Three big men waiting for Birch's free kick. Driven crisply, and it was Green who got the touch. having to turn and being fouled from behind by Dibble Chesterfield's home record was the real cornerstone of their excellent season last year when they finished fourth and beaten twice at home all season Alan Birch almost illuminating the afternoon with an effort that had class written all over it the goalkeeper of Jackson's experience not to be caught out, wasting no chance, seeing the goalkeeper just off his line and trying to love him. Stuck. 
the driven cross. Again, tag the rescuer for Millwall. And here's Sammons, and that will be a free kick. And Andy Massey being called by Mr. Allison, who produces the yellow card. Salmons turning away from Dibble and Massey coming in and he certainly didn't get the ball. <laughs> Salmons recovered to take the free kick himself. Turned away in anticipation and hope that that header might be bearing inside the far post. Kept well by Moss. Blythe. Four forward for Millwall this time. And that's Dibble! And that's the first chance, really, that Millwall have created. Chris Dibble coming in at full tilt beyond the far post from a well-flighted cross from Paul Robinson. And Dibble stabbing it wide. front 22 minutes into the second half Chris Dibble emphasising what a cruel game it is when you're struggling. It could easily have been 1-1. One, one. Now Millwall facing a real struggle. And they're needing to get the ball away here. Bonneman. Birch. Touch of arrogance. Here's Crawford. His problem really is that he didn't want to work it onto his right foot into a crossing position. In the end, the long throw is almost as good as a corner in the shape of Bonniman. But they left Birch, and that could be costly for Millwall. Alan Birch now really showing all the magic. Superb goal. Can the Football Association ask players not to show their delight after scoring a goal like that? Alan Birch, the mistake was Millwall's in leaving him unmarked at the throw, and that impish little shimmy and burying it inside the near post. So he gets two goals inside three minutes. And for Chesterfield now, a platform to really turn on the style.
And Millwall making a substitution. Alan McKenna coming on. And it's David Gregory who's gone off. And Paul Roberts, who's taking the throw here, has switched to right back. Robinson. Touch from Mehmet, goes straight to Wilson. only 19 and it's a measure of Millwall's problems that he's been waiting for some three months to go into hospital for an operation on an injured ankle but with all the other recognized strikers in the club out with more serious injuries McKenna's had to keep playing on from Bonnyman and from Moss Birch with a chance of a run at Robinson goes in for Crawford here's Bonnyman here's Birch is it the hat trick Well, he started it and he so nearly finished it. Thanks to Crawford and then to Bonnyman. And a little toe poke at the end and it hit the outside of the post. Sitton looked up and allowed Crawford to pilfer the ball from him. Birch. Moss ahead of him but trying to stay onside. Birch will collect it again. Moss! And he must just get a yard on the near post. And it hasn't really been Moss's day in front of goal, but his efforts, as always, bringing out the best of those around him. Inside the last two minutes. And Mehmet finding a chance coming his way. Perhaps surprised to find the ball at his feet. It was just driven back in low. And Mehmet couldn't control it or direct it at goal with any power. Dibble. Now sitting for Kinsella. Put away by Green. Defenders will want to seal up a clean sheet. Just time remaining can be measured really in seconds. Mehmet. There's Massey, and that was beautifully struck. John Turner showing his quality from Andy Massey's shot. Hasn't been a day in which he's been kept particularly sharp and warm. Difficult work came, he was equal to it, Turner. Bonnyman using the referee on a different version of uh, the one two. Tart. Birch provided the decoy for him. It's too long for Salmons. seconds of injury time and a vintage second half performance from Alan Birch with two goals to add to the first half effort from Phil Bonnyman. In the end, a comfortable victory for Chesterfield.
and they go off having completed the first half of their season in the third division with 30 points, five more than this time last season when in the end they came so close to promotion. For Millwall, the second half of their season is clearly going to be a fight against relegation. Final score, Chesterfield 3, Millwall 0.